not going to be a long one today. It's going to be short and sweet. I'm trying to figure out what the Lord wanted me to talk about today. And actually, I thought about the last sermon I gave, which was about Thanksgiving. I decided to you know, bring it back to that blessed holiday. It was about being thankful and about giving as a means of sort of acting out our thanks. You know, it's one thing to speak it, it's another thing to you know, walk it. And a lot of times we have to stay cognitive of the fact that we got to walk it the way we talk. Amen. So, like I said, being thankful and giving is a way of actually demonstrating that, that great thanks. And when I thought about Christmas and what Christmas meant, I really started to think about giving once again. And then I said, well, wait a second, you know, Lord put it in my spirit that, you know, the giving of Christmas and the knowledge of the love of Jesus and the great sacrifice that he made for all of us and the fact that how God demonstrated the love that he had for us by giving his own son as a sacrifice for our transgressions. You know, we didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. But because of the love that God has for us, in the midst of our rejecting Him on a daily basis as a people, He still had the love in His heart to sacrifice His only son, His only child, for us. So I thought about love. You know, love came to mind. And I sort of dwelled on love a lot past few days. What is it? What does it really mean to love? And the first scripture I came up with was the uh, first John chapter 4 verse 7. And it said, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God know of God. And when you look at that scripture, it's interesting because God is love. If you had to describe God, if you had to sort of explain to someone what God is, God is love. And everyone that loveth or has the capability of loving is born of God and know of God. And I started thinking about really what stops people from being able or having the capacity to love. You know, it's a, I always tell you, you know, from a worldly standpoint, it's a cold, cold world that we live in. And I think we all can recognize uh, the challenges of living in this world that we have here. Uh, we see a lot of bad things. And, you know, we suffer a lot of pain experiences and we make bad choices and we contribute to our own suffering uh, we don't ask to come into the world we don't necessarily ask for the parents that we had they're not perfect and I think a lot of times some of us have a capacity to just kind of more of an innate ability to maybe love a little more deeply than other people I've seen that in my lifetime. Some people just kind of do it naturally. I think for other people, it's not as natural. It's a little harder for them. Uh, I think a lot of times too, you spoke about your mother, you know, and I think what we have to realize is, is that, you know, what stops people from loving or being able to love is because they have a basic mistrust of other people. They don't trust people. And this has been based on their experiences because they've been hurt by other people. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe it wasn't. Bob's old time sermon about living in someone's skin. You don't really know what they went through, what they endured, what attitude or perspective they had to, or persona they had to adopt order to get through whatever it was they had to get through. I mean, it's about survival at certain points in our lives, especially when we're younger. And in order to survive, we become
how we take on certain personas, certain ways of thinking. And mistrust is a big piece of stopping people from being able to truly love. Another component that stops people from loving is, is fear. There's a lot of mistrust and a lot of fear. And I dare say your mother has a lot of fear and a lot of mistrust. And when you become fearful, when you stop, when you don't necessarily trust people, when you're fearful of what can happen, I think you start to necessarily, oftentimes, you don't start, you start disliking people. You tolerate them. You come up with other means of dealing with people. You learn to manipulate people. You learn to try to always control people. You learn to blame people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you really just don't like them. You don't trust them, and you're fearful of being hurt. And these are wounded people. Sometimes these are people who have never been taught how to love. It didn't come naturally. They were never taught or shown how to truly love. It's unfortunate because right here in this scripture it says, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So in reality, these people, they don't really know God. So they can't be a Christian. They can go to church. They can want to do the right thing. They can try to do the right thing. But they're fearful. They don't trust. And they don't like other people. Because it's usually what's happened to them. So what's left? Well, when you go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21, very interesting proverb that the Lord sent me to, the Spirit sent me to. And it says, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. I really had to think about this scripture when, and why I was led to it. If we're truly seeking God, and we truly love God in the capacity that we can, because even if we don't like people, even if we are fearful of being hurt by people, we can still learn to love God. Because ultimately, we will have to learn to trust God if we love God. That's what this whole Christian thing is all about, this walk of God. If you're really seeking God and you truly love God, you may not like people, you may not trust people, but you can develop a love for the Lord and you can learn to trust God. Because God is not people. God is perfection. God is all powerful, all known, all present. God brought us here. God has a plan for us. You can see what God has done for you in spite of what the world hasn't done or has done to you. So you can learn to love God. And when we learn to love God and seek God, and I, you know, I read a scripture that the Lord put in my spirit. I was reading Daniel. And I have never seen this scripture before, no, never remember reading it. But Daniel got down on his hands and knees, as was his, his, his habit. And he prayed to God four times a day on his hands and knees. And I had never known that about Daniel, one of my heroes of the Bible. The man that was able to go to the lion's den and just sit there calmly with no fear and trust in God 
and know that he would be delivered from the hand of the lion. Now that's quite a man. So he prayed four times a day. And I thought about that. What a demonstration of one's love for God. Sometimes we have the feeling, and we can act on the feeling. Sometimes we have to mimic the behavior to acquire the feeling. Amen. So the Lord put it in my spirit. Pray to me four times a day. Take the time out of your day to pray for me four times a day. Or to me for four times a day. If you do it, that's a demonstration of how hard you're seeking. It's a demonstration of how much you love him. And when you do love God, as the scripture says, you will inherit substance. Substance is the nature of the man. It's what make or the woman. It's what make what you are made up of. That is your substance. But this scripture says, you will inherit substance. Not the substance that the world gives us. Not the substance of the flesh. Not the chemicals that make up the flesh. This is a different type of substance that can only come from God. And I believe this is the substance upon which the person who has been hurt, who has learned to mistrust other people, who is fearful of opening up and communicating and trusting other people, who has never had the sense that other people care and love. This is the substance that can be implanted into that person that will change them and allow them to know love, to know God, and to truly understand it even though they were never taught as a child mm -hmm. because of their situation, parents, what happened. This is how it's done. And I will fill their treasures. The Lord said he's going to fill their treasures. We all have what we treasure in our own heart. Part of what happens when we mistrust, when we are fearful, we develop these treasures. A lot of times it really turns out to be we covet certain things. We can covet certain people because we feel as though we'll derive some pleasure. It has nothing to do from love or security. But right here it says the Lord will fill our treasures. And what that means to me is, is that He's going to give us what is truly to be treasured, and he will fill it. It's not about what we determine, because when we determine, and we're already hurt, and we're already wounded, and we don't understand love, we will treasure things that are not going to move us in that direction, will move us in other directions. But the Lord's going to come in and give us a substance and give us the treasures and fill those treasures so that we will be capable of understanding love. How to receive love and how to give love. It's both are crucial. We'll stop coveting. We'll stop manipulating. We'll stop self-isolating. We'll stop all of those things. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Owe no man anything. Scripture tells us don't owe anybody anything, but to love one another. And that's what Christmas, to me, is all about. It's about loving one another. But you first have to have the capacity to love. You first have to understand what it means to love. You can't be afraid. You can't dislike people. You can't mistrust people. If you bring all that into the equation, 
you will not be capable, truly, of loving one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Amen. Pretty heavy duty there. Mm. The law, the Ten Commandments, and all that went with it. I'm not saying we don't have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Obviously we do. We need to. But guess what? If we don't know love, we don't know God. And we learn, when we learn to love one another with an open, trusting heart, unafraid, fearful of nothing, that's the spirit of Christ. That's the substance that God can give us. And we will have the treasure filled because the treasure is now to express and share that love with our fellow Christian, our fellow man. And that alone, we will have fulfilled the law, just as Jesus fulfilled the law. And we will be like Jesus. Amen. So for this holiday, it is my goal, and I think it should be all of our goals, even people who like Laura, who probably get it more than a lot of people get it, okay? Sister Susan, but the goal should be this, to discover, express, embrace that love of Christ, to go out and share it with other people. Don't be afraid. Don't mistrust. Just do it. Experience it. You know, it can launch us into a direction that no telling what will happen. But we will be truly walking in the spirit of Christ and living through the spirit of Christ. So pray for me that I can continue to accept this. I will pray for all of you. Have a wonderful, marvelous Christmas holidays. And above all, I give all the praise, honor, and glory to the Lord. Amen. Amen.